Function currying allows us to leverage that closure concept to help prevent things from being affected by outside of effects. Now, obviously, if you're going to go window dot or other globals or singletons, for example, that's still going to break it. But if you ch simply change the ping function here, in our case, we'll change our fetch instead of URL is that will actually pass in like that. The old school way of doing it would be function ping URL and then return fetch module and then returns the fetch module URL. So these are basically the two of the same things. This is the arrow function version and this is the old school function declaration way of doing things. I think this is completely unreadable and it starts to get super nested and very confusing. Whereas this, you can either do the arrows forever or you could just, you know, align them in line like this as well. So they kind of scale a little bit better, a lot easier to read, that kind of thing. All just using tabs. Anyway, one thing that's interesting is that now that we've changed things, the way we call the function is different. So instead of doing like, let's say, google.com, and then a comma, and then the fetch module, in this case fetch, and then same with this guy. That's not how you actually do it anymore. You actually treat it as a function. So you do the double call like this. So you basically just get rid of the comma, if you think of it like that. Add it in there, get rid of that guy. There we go, much better. Now if we run it, you can see it works like before, but we have a function that returns a function, so then we can call it again with the second parameter. So instead of doing a comma, with parentheses, right? Go back to the way it was and add in a comma. That's the normal way of doing normal functions. Currying simply just says, hey, return a function and then call it with parentheses, right? So that's function currying in a nutshell. What it has an interesting effect of doing is that keeping this URL in a closure so it can't be affected. This is very non-idiomatic JavaScript if there is such a thing like Dr. Axel talks about. One way of visualizing it is basically saying, all I need is fetch. To this function, all it needs is a fetch module, right, to actually do its work, if we just pass in the URL. So if we pass in, all I need is fetch Google, and const all I need is fetch directly what on, plot out. Now, take these functions. There we go. Now we have a function that takes one parameter fetch. So think of this URL already being pre-filled inside the closure. Remember, it's pre-filled. It's stuck in that function. And so when we call it, then it actually uses it and runs the, the meat of what we're trying to get it to do. Same with this. We have to pass in two parameters for it to actually run this. If we pass in one, it's like, okay, well, here's a function. So we passed in one, cool, we got a function back. But once we pass in the final remaining parameter argument, then she'll actually run. So that's the basics of how function currying works.